Running a successful online business is actually pretty challenging. We're going to need a lot of tools to keep growing and actually keep giving that great support. Good thing there's a service that's an all-in-one CRM service that's called Engage Bay. This one is a system that we're going to implement in our business and it's actually pretty easy to get started. So what I'm going to do on this video is show you how easy it is to implement Engage Bay on your business. So let's get started. Okay, let's dive right into Engage Bay. Like I said, it's an all-in-one CRM service. Plus it has more tools that are gonna help us with our business. And what I, one of the things I like about Engage Bay is that they divide this in four categories, which gives us a cleaner look and easier to get around. They have the marketing, sales, service, and live chat. Let's get started with marketing. This is where we're going to find our email marketing, our forms, our landing pages, and much more. The first thing that I would recommend is adding your contacts. So in contacts, we have our contacts list right here. We can add them one by, by one by one or by CSV. But we can also create lists which are super easy to create. In this case, I can create a list based on a filter that I can create. So for example, if I name this new, I can create a static list or a smart list and add a condition to this. Now, one of the ones that I've created is based, for example, on the email. I said that if it contains, for example, Gmail, well, these are free emails. And that's one of the lists that I've created. But you can create lists however you like, depending on the filters that you select. So for example, from all the contacts that I've added, I have free emails, 16 of them. And this is just a way to kind of show you what you can do with filters. So I've just created this list really quickly. Next thing is we have forms. We have inline forms that are super easy to create. And I can just do them right here in the demo video because they're so easy to do. So for example, if I like this one, I can just go ahead and choose that template and start customizing this template for the form to sign up. I can change the look and feel of this, change colors, text, how it looks, the fields, I can add more fields to this. Or if I wanna add another field, like asking for the first name, the email, the role, the phone number, et cetera, just add them here. For example, first name, I'll drag it in the beginning, I'll drag this down, I'll remove the label because I wanna have, I have, wanna have, I want to have that clean look and it's just that easy. Just edit these settings and you're good to go. There's also the settings for this, the main settings. We can also do double opt-in if you wanna enable that. We have the send email notifications, the other settings like enable recap, uh, recapture and all of that settings, exclude IP addresses. And you have a lot of tools that you can tweak in this. For the double opt-in email, you have all these settings for the autoresponder. And if you like it, you can go ahead and save it and you have it ready to be used, okay? Now, you also have the pop-up forms, which is another way that you can select forms. There's a pop-up, there's a notify bar, there's a pop-up bottom left, pop-up bottom right. There's a call to actions to this. We can enable these, change them. There's the themes if we wanna change it. There's the design for this particular one that we've selected and the settings for this pop-up. So, super easy to do. Next thing we have is landing pages. Again, super easy to just start a landing page. And yes, they do have custom domain when you are on the paid plan. So you can see one of these templates that, that you like right here. For example, I don't know, if I like this one, I can go ahead and choose it and just start editing this template right here and customize it to whatever I need. Every element that I select, I get the settings on the right. On the left, I have the content for this. If I wanna add some headings and text some buttons, etc or blocks. So for example, if I like a block from another um, template that they have available, I can just go ahead and grab it and bring it inside of here, inside of this template. Go ahead and save it. I'll just name this new, submit, and you have a landing page, just like that, okay? You can go ahead and preview this. And we have a landing page. This is a live landing page right now. I mean, in less than a minute, just go to landing pages and you can create one really quickly. And then, yes, there's a whole bunch of settings that you can um, tweak with this, but in this case, I don't wanna make this video super long. Next thing is we have the templates. For the email templates, um, you can create templates to make things faster and easier. So for example, if I want to create a new one, I can select one of these templates. So if I choose this one, I go ahead and edit this template and I can save it so I can use it later on in my automations. Now, this template reminds me of American Express kind of emails because they have that kind of vibe to it. And yes, you can click on these, edit all the settings for it, you can add some elements, you can go back, there's some content and there's body to be added and edited right here. And it's super easy to get started. In this case, I'm not gonna save it, I already have a template. There's also video templates if you want to create these, you can record your own video or upload a video and get it started just like this. There's also campaigns for email broadcasts, so if you wanna start a broadcast, 
we can go ahead and start one right now. I can just go ahead and name this new. You can do regular broadcasts, like just simple send out, or we can do an A-B testing. So if you want to test two emails, see which one is more clickable. Well, we can do that with A-B testing and then start sending the one that we like the most. RSS to email also. So in this case, I'll just name it new. I can write a subject. Subject, I can use the variables from the data that I have already. So I can implement in the subject like check out these deals and personalize it with the first name. So it's gonna grab that variable from all the emails. The preview text, the who's it from, well, it's me, George. The email, reply to, reply to me. Go next and just go like this, select the contacts. I can do all contacts also or select from the list that I've created and do choose template or plain text. If I go next, it's gonna give me a list of all the templates available and the one that I have. So for example, this is a safe template that I've created previously, I can just go ahead and use it here. Yes, this is what I want. I go ahead and save it because I can go ahead and edit it as we go. And if we're good to go, we can go ahead and send this out. And no, I'm not gonna send it out right now, but it's, it's just that easy, okay, to start a campaign. You can also do an SMS broadcast, start a sequence, automations. Automations, I love automations because um, once we start automations, things are just much easier. So let's just say that we have an opt-in form somewhere else. And once that email gets added here, in here of EngageBay, we can start an automation. For example, send a follow-up email. I'll go ahead and start this. And this is a template that's going to start it off for me. And you can see the templates right here. Let me drag these to the top just to show you in one section. Oops, cancel. There we go. So this one says when a tag is added, it's going to start this sequence. So it's going to delay one hour, send an email, delay two days, and send another email. So if someone is added automatically to tag via a webhook, via opt-in form, etc., it's going to start this flow. And yes, we can do a lot with this. For example, these are the actions. So you can delay, you can wait till, set properties, add to a list, send email, just do a really complex automation here or keep it simple. And there's also the conditions. So if it's a custom field or if it has a specific tag or is it A-B testing, has a call log, et cetera, contact score is above, et cetera, contact has owner, all of that. And just start a really cool automation with this. Once you set, you can forget, okay? There's also the workflows if you wanna start those off. And there's a bunch of tools available like Social Suite, File Repository, push notifications, site messages, sticky bars. I mean, if I just go through all of these, I would take hours to make this video because there's so many things that we can do. And like I said, there's a lot of tools with this. You can see the activity, the SMS log, and reports for this. Now that's just for the marketing section. Like I said, there's so many things that you can do. Next thing is sales everything related to sales. So in sales, again, we have our contacts, we have our list, and this section we have companies. When we create companies, we can use them here. And in the deals, we have like this kind of a task management system. So when we have a new prospect, we can create it here, and we can add them to new, the prospect, the proposal, was it won or was it lost? And we keep track of all the people that we contact in this section. So if you have team members in this, this is gonna be really useful for that section. For example, if I wanna create a new one, I can just go ahead and create it here, and if it's gonna be a lead, and where is the milestone with this person? So if we already um, made a proposal, we can set a proposal, and it's gonna be added here. But let's just say that we we have this one already and we have a proposal made for him already. Well, we just drag him over here. If you wanna see this particular person or company, it's super complex, like all the information that we have, you can keep it simple or fill all of this out. We can see what's been going on with this person, the probability percentage, and we can edit this percentage also. We can add tags to this, create it on. We can add some notes like, you know what, for example, you know, this person wants such and such thing. We can put notes here. The contacts for him, the companies, the emails, the tasks for him, the events, the workflows, product proposals, and documents. All of that for this particular person, company. So it's pretty complete in that sense. Next thing we have is the tasks. Again, for tasks, we have, for, for example, for team members, this is really useful not started, in progress, waiting, completed, or deferred, and we can edit all of this. There's the automations for this also. For example, if I wanna create an automation, I can just go ahead and call this new, submit, and start an automation flow for this. So for example, if the deal track changes, well, we can create an automation based on that. 
if the deal is created. So let's just say a new deal is created, we can add the, the event and do more with it. For example, what actions do I want to apply to this? Send an email, add a condition, and create that automation with it. So let's go ahead and get out of here for now. And next thing we have is calendar. So this is a calendar view, so you can view a clear way of what's going to happen next. For example, on 21, if we have something, we're gonna be able to view it here. There's also a lot of more tools in the sales section. So we have the appointments, we have the file repositories, the workflows, sequences, the trash, the activity for this, WhatsApp, products. You can do, you can add your um, SMS sending systems here. For example, if, if you want to use Twilio, which is a popular SMS system, you can enable it here. And you have all these options available for the SMS. The products, if you're going to create products for your sales page and all of that. The proposals, for example, in proposals, if I want to create a new one, I'll use this template. And again, I can design my own if I like. And in proposals, we can go ahead and create this really nice looking proposal page. We can add our products here. So for example, if we, had, if we have products, we can go ahead and add it. And it looks pretty nice sending it out this way. Plus, it's going to be integrated into the system where everything is tied with the contacts. And that's why it's an all-in-one CRM. Okay. There's the call logs if you're using this with um, callings and reports. That's for the sales section. Next thing is we have service. I'm not interested right now to, con to connect a domain. But this is the mark, oh, the service se section. Let me create a domain for this. In service sections, we can create our ticketing system to give support. Like I mentioned before, growing a business and keeping great support and service is actually pretty challenging because you have more customers, more people contacting you, and well, the bigger the business, the more problems you have, and you need to solve them the more efficiency possible, the more efficiently possible, okay? So for example, this is a custom, a ticket that was created. This is a public uh, reply, the internal notes. So this is a starting typing. I can reply to this person, okay? We have the status for this. Is it open, new, pending, or solved? Is, is it an incident? Is it a problem? Is it just a question, just a task, etc.? The priority, if we're gonna set it to high or urgent, depending on that customer who's contacting us, we can tag it with something that is relevant to us so we can later find it on. And if we want to assign it to another team member. So all of that is possible right here. Okay. Let's go back with the ticket system. And we're going to be able to view them here in the neat form. And we have our filters to find it. And we can create one here manually if we need to. Okay. Next thing is we have the views. So what's been going on with these. For example, recently updated tickets, unassigned tickets, etc. Automations, again, you can create automations for these. Some of them are already created by default, but we can create our own. So again, I'll just call this new, and we can create our automation here. Start an automation, depending on how you want to set this up. For example, on ticket status change. So for example, if I change the status to urgent, well, let's go ahead and choose it up. Oh, for example, new, we can add an event and do something with this. Start a new thing, for example, add a tag to it or do more things with it. Set a ticket assignee, send an email. So if it's new, we can just assign it automatically to someone who is providing support. Or if it's in certain category, assign it to a certain person and etc. Again, with conditions and you have conditions to also make this more professional and more complex to make things easier, okay? And also they have macros. Macros help us reply to customers really easily with messages. For example, if you have something really long that you're always replying, you can add a macro to it, like the settings on how to do something, like how to set up a, a custom domain. Well, you have all the DNS settings and the steps and one, two, three, four, five, et cetera. It makes things really easy just responding with macros. And we also have the settings for this um, particular system for the service. There's the support groups for this. The can responses, again, helps us respond easily. Preferences for this particular system. Ticket fields, you have them here, priority type, we can change and add those statuses. Remember I told you you can customize this to make things more uh, relevant to your business. You can do so here. And again, we have the help center, makes it here. How to use a C, a C name, this is something I created really easily. And you can just create articles for this. You can create collections, preferences for this, and a custom URL if you want to use it. For example, we can go ahead and edit the design for this particular system for the ticketing system. So right now we can change this sections and edit all of this, the article sections, 
our links, our footer, and all of that. And it's just really practical to use EngagePay for all of this, okay? And the settings for this particular system, like the fab icon, live chat, if you wanna enable it here, I'll show you live chat in a bit. The page title, meta description, and meta keywords for SEO purposes. Custom URL, if you wanna connect our custom URL here, that is possible. File repository, trash, and activities available here. And next we have is the live chat. Yes, this also has a live chat. And I think it's pretty cool because it also has bots and automations for this. So for example, we have our conversations here once the live chat starts. And like I said, when you have team members, this is really easy to view here. And if it's unassigned, you're gonna view them here. And if it's assigned to me, I'll view it here. If it's assigned to another team member, he's gonna view it also. Next we have is bots. So in this case, I created a simple bot and I, I named it Johnny5. I don't know if you people watch that movie. It's probably from my times, maybe not yours, but you can create a bot right here. For example, the welcome, new dialogues, and you have those settings for the, at the email settings for, for buttons. If they continue with this a dialogue for the particular message that they click on and you can set it published or unpublished. If you want to create another bot, that's also available. So you don't have to stick with one. So it's pretty cool. The web rules for this. So if you want to create a new web rule, for example, you can name it, add a group to it or group display options. So on scroll percentage, so for, for example, if they scroll 10%, then it's going to pop up. If not, it won't even show or delay, for example, I don't know, 60 seconds. Maybe you don't want to provide the live chat right away. You're going to provide it for someone who's already sticking there for at least 60 seconds. And it's just things that lets you sign up, um, set up for the web rules. The chat widget, here's the settings to edit the actual chat widget look. For example, the greeting title. So right now it's a support team. The welcome message, this is all editable right here. The default profile picture, the widget color. So if the branding of your website is, for example, blue and not purple, just go ahead and edit it right here. The chat button position, bottom right or bottom left. And it's just super easy to set that up. The chat form. So in the chat form, so they get started, you know, they're asking for the name, the email, and a message. You can edit all of this if you like. So placeholders, edit that here. The shortcuts, if you want to add a shortcut for enabling the chat, shortcut key, the settings for the live chat, the sound notifications, if you want to customize that, desktop notifications, email notifications, email defaults, business hours, and system messages. All that is set, in, set up. And for live chat, we have file repository and the trash. So all those tools, there's there's available here in Engage Bay. It's an all-in-one CRM plus more tools. So I would think it's not just specific to CRM because it has way more than just the client relationship management system, but you can practically run a business inside of Engage Bay. So check it out. They have a free version. Try it, sign up, and if you want to check it out, I'll be leaving the link in the description. And that's Engage Bay. That's a wrap.